I'ma trust the whole damn process for the record Till we breaking records Reminisce about the past days Now we rise and fly Journeys to the sky Azimuth inside my grip Always know the way now Beauty fill my days now Take it day by day Sound couldn't be prouder Cause you know we alive Hi, everyone. Welcome to In Process. As always, I'm your host, Andres Moreno, and this is Azimuth Theater's podcast highlighting artists, their artistry, and their process. Today, I am super grateful to be welcoming two people who have believed in me, who have laughed with me, who have cried with me, and who keep me going every single day. My pals, Morgan Yamada and Sue Goberden, the two co-artistic producers of Azimuth Theater and the fearless leaders of this wonderful company. Welcome, pals. Thank you. Oh, thanks. So nice to have you here. <laughs> uh, thanks for being my first ever guests on the podcast. This Woo-hoo! is so exciting. I wanted to start off by just offering you a chance to share a little bit about your story, where you started. And I know this might be like a bit of a long-winded question, <laughs> <laughs> but take your time. Morgan, would you like to kick us off? Yes! <laughs> I, I look at Sue to be like, you're going now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. Okay. My journey with theater. Oh, the love of my life. That is not my dog. But I guess my journey with theater, it started when I was, uh, I was really shy as a kid. So my mom decided to, like, put us in this theater camp. It was a musical theater camp at Horizon Stage in Spruce Grove, Alberta. (laughs) And it was this musical theater camp, and I was really terrified the whole time. And me and my sister had to sing this uh, solo together. It was a duet, I guess. It ended up being a solo because I forgot all of the words and just lip synced through it. And my sister sang and belted her way through. And then in that moment, I was like, oh... I like this. <laughs> um, now my sister <laughs> doesn't get close to a stage, but I love it. So that was like kind of the moment that I can pinpoint being like, oh, this is fun. And this is like a way to kind of like explore and stretch. And then from then on, I just kind of like fell into to more theater. And I, in high school, I was kind of like, oh, this is the path that I might go down. And then it was solidified when I started university. And for me, my journey kind of went... Uh, the university route, so I got my uh, BFA at the U of A Mm -hmm. uh, in acting, and then just kind of did the thing. From then on, I was just like, yeah, I want to do the thing. Mm -hmm. So I've just been like playing pretend since then. Still doing the thing, still (laughs) pretending. My theater journey has been weirdly not theater for a lot of it. I just spent a lot of my life being afraid of theater, and like, I, I auditioned for, okay, so I guess if we're heading back, you know, oh, let's I, go to the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> February 6, 1993. She emerged. I uh, guess. Flash forward, you know, many years from then, I decided I'm going to try theater out because it seems like a way less hard option than, like, I don't know, like home ec or something. So I was like, I'm going to try this. And then I realized, ah, I love this. <laughs> and I saw the show that made me want to do the thing. I saw Nevermore when I was 15. Mm. And I was like, very cool. This is it. I'm going to do this now. Mm. Uh, but then I, I auditioned for theater arts at McEwen many, many years ago, like fresh out of high school with zero idea of like what was required to be successful in an audition like that. Did not get it. It was a horrendous audition. Oh, like, no. truly did a really terrible job. Uh, and that's entirely on me. Like, uh, <laughs> But, you know, at that point, I was just like, okay, so I'm trash at this, and I'm not going to do this. Oh. So then for, like, five years, I didn't do anything. I just focused on, like, arts management and trying to, you know, figure out that part of the practice and decide how much breach into each side of it I wanted to have. And then, yeah, I started doing theater again when my friends from high school and I we wrote a musical like in high school and we wrote it for seven years and we were like okay I think we just need to put this up because if we don't there's what are we doing (laughs) so we put that up and that was the first thing I did on stage that I was like okay I can do this I'm an adult and I can do this (laughs) Um, so yeah so then I just kind of searched to find my my little niche Mm -hmm. and I don't know if I found it yet but like (laughs) We're on our way. <laughs> We're pretending every day. Exactly. <laughs> and now, together as the duo that is spearheading this wonderful company, what's that journey been like? We got these jobs, like, our contract started a year ago, October 3rd. 
All right. So we just passed our first anniversary. Yeah. Happy oh. birthday. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, but we started like a little bit before that, like the month before. Mm-hmm. And it's been amazing. Like, mm-hmm. it's been really hard. Like, you know, it's been like <laughs> a steep learning curve. It has not been what I expected, but I don't know what I did expect. But, like, Morgan and I talk about this all the time. We just, like, I cannot imagine going down this path with anyone else. Because oh yeah. we just, like, found... <laughs> it's so funny because we just, like, found, like... If we... Imagine that we were not... <laughs> this is going to sound terrible. No, no, no. But imagine that we weren't, like, whole people. And okay. then we found each other. <laughs> and then we became one functional human. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like hi we are we are now one full administrator <laughs> yeah. but uh, but I do think it's been such a journey in the way of like finding out what what our visions are and I think it was it was nice because we didn't have that steep kind of adjustment period of what we dreamt this job to be or what we dreamt like what as could be mm-hmm. I think that's one thing that like kind of makes this partnership such a such a wonderful one in my heart is that like we never have a disagreement on the vision of where we want to get to. Mm-hmm. It's just we have so many strategies on how to get to that vision. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So it's about like figuring out which path we choose. So I think that's something that's nice is that like the core values that we share are like in alignment in that way. Mm-hmm. Totally. Like there's never any question about whether or not we agree on, you know, where we place importance, you know, a day to day. But yeah, what's been cool has been like, looking at all the possible directions we could go and then just like finding the little bits of Morgan and then the little bits of Sue that kind of show up inherently in those steps. It's uh, it's been really nice. (laughs) You two are amazing. Um, (laughs) Everyone's great. Everyone is great. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Appreciation station. Also, that's what we have on Thursdays. Yeah. Thursday is appreciation station. (laughs) We used to talk about the things we appreciate. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you. That's how you get through all the all of the, the less pleasant parts. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> and now, talking about this partnership, there's something beautiful you've added to the Azimuth legacy, which is this idea of proudly in process. Yeah. I, well, I think it's it's also just selfishly stolen from the folks who have come before us. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just building on. I think we were like reading through the website on one of our first days. And correct me if I'm wrong, Sue. I could mm-hmm. be imagining or dreaming of this experience. But I think we were going through like this old, like the older stuff on the website, and it was just something that popped up. It was like we are proudly in process, and it was like written in some text, and it was like, that's just amazing. <laughs> totally, <laughs> we should yoink that, put that in, <laughs> and yoink we did. Yes, <laughs> we sure did yoink that. <laughs> But no, I'm not making fun. We genuinely did that. And then we just realized that like there was so much of what we do that doesn't get celebrated because it's not complete. And I say that in air quotes. Like it's not complete or it's not perfect. Mm-hmm. And perfection is overrated in my opinion. And there's just so much work that goes into getting to that like perfect end result that like it doesn't make sense not to celebrate that journey. Mm-hmm. So we just decided that we were going to try and put a focus on not just, you know, this like polished end product, but every step of the way to get there. And and it kind of goes along with the idea, too, that like if you take care of people or you 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 do your best to, to create environments where people take the forefront of the work that you're doing, that the process will follow mm-hmm. and the product will be amazing regardless whether it's like a pleasing polished piece or it's a beautiful experience for those involved like i think that's a part of the process as well too yeah it's it's, it's been a big part of like redefining what success looks like for us in terms of you know where we want to go with as and you know what we what we can kind of bring to the table Especially since we're like a, a mid-size organization with like not the most money. <laughs> so like we're trying to find more ways that we can still make work happen. Mm-hmm. Now, as artists, because obviously, yes, you work together in this beautiful partnership and this beautiful team. But as artists, a question that I want to ask you is where do you draw inspiration from? As an artist, for me, I I like theater that hits me unexpectedly I feel like there's like a lot of work that I don't necessarily see coming and what I I guess what I mean by that is like 
I, I really love subverting expectations. I mm-hmm. love work that kind of takes what you think and gives you a fresh take on it or gives you, you know, a, an alternate lens to look at it through. So I'm always inspired by opportunities to do that. I'm also inspired by, like... I'm a sucker for an underdog story. I love underdogs. I love folks who just like cannot get ahead, finally getting ahead. And I don't even know that that's the impetus for telling any story that I typically tell, but it is something that I think helps bring a different perspective to to the work that I'm looking at. Like if I'm looking at, you know, a story of, you know, someone opening their own business or something, I am more likely to look at the intersections that brought that person to that place. And that kind of inspires the work that I want to see. Because I think it's just a lot of cultural intersections that we don't often get to see that I love. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. you, Morgan? (laughs) Oh, goodness. This is such a beautiful question. And also, like, thank you for asking it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is such a beautiful gift for me as well, you know? I get to hear all these stories from artists that I admire and friends that I love, so... I really appreciate like you being here. For me, it's the it's like what what inspires you, right? That's the base of the question. Mm-hmm. I think like theater, theater on the extremes is something that brings me so much joy, and and extremes in terms of like physicality, or emotion, or just like how we can kind of push uh, the expectations, but how we can push expectations of what's possible, both physically and emotionally but in ways that's sustainable. Mm -hmm. And I think not pushing for the sake of pushing, but pushing because you safely can. And I think that's why I'm like so, so excited by really physical work or work that's like really gross and like horry. Like Dead Center of Town with Catch the Keys is like some of the coolest work because you're just pushing like poetic stuff and you're also pushing like physicality and also found space. Like it's... I think really at the core of it is like, what can you do that's weird and fun and also like impactful? So I think just on the extremes, but doing it like with joy. Totally. Like violence with joy. <laughs> <laughs> and safely, like you mentioned. Exactly. Right? Totally. Exactly. Like, it's like stage combat brain. That's also <laughs> like the other half of my practice. So what is something that's exciting both of you right now? Hmm. It's a pretty open-ended Honestly, mm-hmm. this project is super exciting to me right now. And and being able to collaborate so actively with you is just a dream. And, and I say that in, in terms of being able to have a collective of minds working on, on a similar pathway, but having, like, everyone's journey adjacent mm-hmm. and us being able to, like, expand and and learn more from different folks, I think is, like, what's really filling my cup right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is super exciting. I love that we get to do this. Something else, too, that, like, I've, like, really rediscovered my love for, it's it's scrappy theater. I love theater that, like, defies odds to be made. You know, I have some friends working on some projects right now that I don't know if they're ever going to see the light of day, but I know that I think they're brilliant. Like, a a good friend of mine, like, started a, a, a Scream, a Scream parody musical, and I... He sent me the opening number, and I was like, this is so good. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know what has to happen for me to see this, but I want to. And there's just so much work like that. And I'm always so excited to see, like, what's going to come out of the woodwork. Because mm-hmm. there's just no way to know. It's, it's like, the best surprise. Well, and I think that's such a good gift of this time. Like, it's, like, the great incubation mm-hmm. of work. And I think... To, to jump off what you're saying is like there's so much work that's being developed or in process like I've never had the chance to read so many drafts of pieces mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and like really see like how stuff is evolving with the times and like how we can be part of creating like relevant theater for the people in our spheres yeah. and for the greater community and for like everyone so it's like there's so many pieces being made that like are just awesome <laughs> as I like clench the air with <laughs> <laughs> oh but it's so true though like there's just been so many things that like I mean I think it's it, there's two levels right there's like the level of like looking at it purely at like a script and the concept and what you're looking at and then there's the added layer of 
not knowing how folks are going to adapt technologically to mm-hmm. like make this work happen. And there's been so many cool diversions from what you'd expect in terms of the way people present their work throughout, you know, the, the pandemic. It's been amazing. Mm-hmm. Like I've, I've been so inspired and just like I'm so excited to see how far those boundaries can keep getting pushed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I want to go back to something you said because I've, I've never heard that term, but the idea of the great incubator. <laughs> and this idea that like we as artists, we, we know we're survivalists. We will survive. But the idea that like even a pandemic has has not really stopped us. We've just found different ways to keep doing what we love to do. Mm-hmm. It's it's super inspiring, you know, it's, and it, it's like we're all doing it together. Exactly. A friend of mine told me this quote and I don't know who said it. But they they were just like, you know, art is the purest form of rebellion. And I was like, that is so true. Because, like, all of the odds are, like, completely against what it is we want to do. Uh, but we do it anyways. And we find ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We find ways. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is my favorite question to steal from a very popular TV show. But if you could talk to yourself... A younger version of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls out the picture. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, or just younger artists who are coming into this mm. wacky career path, this beautiful, enriching path that they're about to go on. Like, what would you what would you give them? You know, any wisdom or anything you want to say to them? I always get caught by, you know, what I always thought my barriers were. Like, when I was younger, I was just like, I can't take up space because no one's made space. And that felt horrible for, you know, most of my life. And, like, now I'm, like, old enough and, like, I've lived enough to be able to, like, look that kid in the face and be like, bring a bulldozer, make your own space. Like, you're fine. (laughs) Everything's going to be fine, but just do it yourself. Don't wait for somebody else to do it for you. So I think that's what I'd, what I tell them. Mm -hmm. also to just like say no more often like I don't know I was always such a like people pleasing kid and now I'm like if I don't wanna I'm not gonna and I shouldn't (laughs) totally what about you Morgan I think like I, th- I think for for young Morgadu is not to take everything so seriously and I think that's that's not everything is high stakes and I think for a long time I, I used to think that everything had to be perfect, like that this un, unachievable goal for perfection, when perfection is kind of boring. So I think it's just like having fun and letting things fall as they as they will. And this is also for now me as well. <laughs> <laughs> as Sue's eyes are like, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. I'm here to, I'm here to tell normal time Morgan that. <laughs> I mean, you have done wonders to me already. Right? <laughs> Again, folks, two halves of one whole administrator. <laughs> one whole administrator. <laughs> Hey, pal. Enjoying the conversation? Traversing the Azimuth is a brand new branch of Azimuth Theatre, aimed at connecting artists with a wider community, deepening mutual understanding, and getting to share each artist's process and journey. If you would like to continue hearing these amazing stories, you can help out by going to azimuththeatre.com sponsorship and sponsor Traversing the Azimuth. Your sponsorship will go straight into paying more artists to come and share what it means for them to be proudly in process. We would also like to take this moment to thank the Canada Council for the Arts for their support in the pilot of this project. For more information on Traversing the Azimuth, go to azimuththeatre.com traversing. I also want to highlight another very cool project that I think is 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 very exciting to me to to see how it's gonna come true. But can you tell us a little bit more about the ASMAP and the mentorship program and kind of what your vision and your ideas for that are? Yeah, so ASMAP is the Asmith Theater Mentorship and Apprenticeship Program, uh, which like we're piloting, which is super exciting. What we wrote in our little grant at the start of our tenure is now here. (laughs) (laughs) It's basically just an opportunity to, like, have another door open for theater education, really. I think the basis is Sue and I have had doors open for us 
And at least for me, I can speak for myself. It's like, I feel like it's my responsibility as an artist to hold that door open and invite folks in. Or not invite, but like give them the space. It's more so to allow for a way of, of learning that is adjacent or like in line with our work as artists, which is like, we really are in a trade. So I feel like apprenticeship and learning through doing is so useful. I think it's a, it's a way to, to be able to explore in a different way or explore differently. And we'll see how it goes. Totally. Yeah, it's, it's been really cool because like the community is coming out to support big time. Like we've, mm-hmm. uh, a part of this program is like developing a shadowing opportunities for the participants who go through it. And, and it's been really amazing to like have all of these companies in town reach out to us and say, you know, our doors are open, like folks can come shadow on whatever they want. And these are our schedules and, you know, we can make something work. So this tells me two things. The first thing is that, you know, our community is strong enough to sustain a program that, you know, embraces emerging artists and builds them up inside of itself. Mm -hmm. And two is that, the fact that all of these companies are coming out to play means they recognize the need. So I think that that just speaks volumes to like what we can do outside of Azimuth even. You mm-hmm. know, I think it gives mm-hmm. folks agency. Yeah, and I think it's such a great opportunity to to just offer mentorship. You, like, even if you've gone through school or you haven't, like any ent- extra mentorship can be the difference between being able to believe in yourself and being scared to open some doors because maybe you haven't been in those spaces before. Oh, totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think a part of it too is like this program where we talked about like building it out. We talked about how we wanted to make it for folks who have had barriers in access or who like we're not served by traditional education. And that's something that we're really finding is that like there are folks who have gone through like traditional educational institutions that haven't uh, been able to make the most out of that time because they have, you know, like learning needs that need to be met or, you know, or life. Yeah. <laughs> or life life exactly. just happens. Right. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's, I think something that, that was beautiful with, with building the program and, and as well as like chatting with people about it is like finding that sometimes the, the, the dreams you have won't be accomplished by one path. So it's like, where can you find that turnoff? Mm -hmm. of of being able to be like cool this is the path that I want to go on but maybe I'll take this little detour and maybe that will lead it or or I'll be able to find a a different way in Mm -hmm. and I think that's really what it is is like a different option hopefully and like also a different way to build community because I think like like what you're saying Sue it's like how can we build with the collective in mind because it wouldn't be possible for us to do it on our own like it, it would be impossible and it really is rooted in in the fact of us being gateways to community, really. Totally. And, like, Morgan and I have, like, had very opposite journeys in terms of how we got to this point. Morgan's got her BFA, which is amazing. And I am an alum not. I went to school and it didn't work for me. And life got, life was, you know, dictating that I do something else. And then I did. And I realized that it's just that thing, you know, I if you b- make that space you're going to be able to take it up, but you have to make it first. And this idea that traditional education is the way Mm -hmm. to like make that space and the way to kind of earn your own legitimacy is, I think it's outdated. And I think there's, there's the opportunity for us to, to make it that much more accessible through, you know, being nurtured by the people in our community who have all these amazing skills to offer and like so many experiences to share and there's just so many, there's so much opportunity that I think we've been missing out on for far too long. Yeah. You've kind of touched to this a little bit, but I, I want to ask, we practice for the most part theater as artists, and it's an artistic practice that comes with its own values and its own systemic judgments. And I guess my question is how, how do we bring new fresh air into this art form? How can we bring uh, a sense of exploration into this mm-hmm. art form that we practice to be able to continue it and bring it forward, you know, into the future. I think that's a that's a wonderful question and and I'm hopeful. I'm mm-hmm. hopeful. I do think there's been like a seismic seismic shift for for this past year, 5 years before that, as well as like the 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 generation that has come before us have been like really pushing hard against like 
some systematic barriers or systemic barriers. But I, I, I do think that like what's exciting or what's inspiring is really like how can we actually take care of people and not use them. So I think that's like a big shift, at least that I am experiencing is like it's it's maybe slow, but it's happening where it's like the show might not always have to go on and being gracious with that of at the end of the day, we're people Mm -hmm. and (laughs) and we're making art, which is so valuable and so beautiful. But we can't make art if we don't take care of ourselves and we don't ca- take care of our teams. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So I think that for me is something that's lovely about being like, great, maybe we are more creative with what we can offer. Yeah, I also yeah. think too, like something that is uh, an opportunity that I think we have to keep emerging folk, you know, coming through our our communities and helping them nurture themselves into professional working artists I think it's reestablishing the how do I say this I think it's about redesigning the framework for what you should and should not allow your practice to take hold of internally Mm -hmm. like I think it's a matter of like making sure that we're not letting our art or our practice inform your worth as a human because that's something that we so often get caught up in for no good reason. Mm-hmm. It's such a detriment to so many people to see folks, you know, put themselves through that kind of suffering and for what? You know, internally <laughs> there's just there's it's not worth the heartache. So I think it's about, you know, deciding that there are new more important boundaries that we need to set. And I also think it's about rethinking what we want the final product to look like. You know, because like you know, we have this we keep seeing work that tries to go for this polished, perfect end thing and product. And while that is important, mm-hmm. I you know, people want that and they should. There also needs to be space to breathe. And like, I love the moments in between. And I find that emerging folk learn the most in those moments in between. There needs to be more opportunity that way. Because I think that people are so afraid of opening the doors to new talent because of this idea of the the perfect final product. And regardless of who you open your doors to, you can get that. Mm -hmm. But it's a matter of how you approach it, right? And I think that that's a a big part of the conversation as well. Mm -hmm. And I I think that's, that's, that's a very important thing to say, at least. I don't know if it's said enough. But the idea that we as artists, we're here to explore and we're here to, to dig and, and get deeper into these topics. And sometimes that in itself can be much more fruitful and empowering than the final product. Like mm-hmm. Some of those moments in rehearsal can be really what shapes you as an artist moving forward, right? That's why like my experience with uh, The Lobbyist this year was so fruitful because it was an experience that I really felt like the final product was something that I can look back on and go, hey, I did that. Whether or not it's something that I think is beautifully polished, it's something I worked on, and it's something that stretched me years in my in my path. Oh, it makes such a big difference to have that space to play and to like, you know, and to, to really take stock of the time that it took to get from point A to point B and like what you did with that time. And like how that <laughs> informs your practice moving forward, mm-hmm. I think is invaluable to a person as they build themselves into the artist they want to be. It's also the thing too, where it's like artists, it's, it's a lot of us wear so many different hats, mm-hmm. right? Where like a lot of artists are also educators and also like artists do so many things. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think it's, it's also what do we learn from those processes and what do we give back to the community or like what do you like take into other other things that you do mm-hmm. and I think that's where the value really comes from is not just like the product but it's like the the community dissemination so uh speaking about self-care is there something in your everyday life that you go to to relax something that you love to do when you've had a long day or you know a long week or whatever and you go home what's that one thing that's going to bring you like true relaxation <laughs> what do I <laughs> I know Morgan's answers 
<laughs> I already okay. do. I know do where you? your answer. Yeah, I do. What are my answers? <laughs> You're going to cuddle your dog. Yes. Because mm-hmm. he's perfect. Mm-hmm. You're going to bake. Yes. You mm-hmm. love baking. You also love ramen. Yes. There's going to be a ramen time somewhere in there. And then you're gonna you're gonna learn something. Oh yeah. You're gonna go and like learn a new app or like a new skill. No, honest to goodness, Morgan learns new things all the time, and I'm so impressed by it. And it and she just like likes to do it. Okay. Morgan does. <laughs> I've never seen someone attack an app with such ferocity. And the best part is like she'll be exploring it, and then <laughs> there's gonna be something that she's like, I can put my logo on it, <laughs> and she'll lose it. <laughs> It's the best. That totally didn't happen today. <laughs> I, the best part is I not only did it happen today, it happens most days. <laughs> it's a half of the day. <laughs> did, you, did you hear that? Half of the day? That was a thing. Was it? When we first started, Morgan showed me a new app every day. And I'm, I'm not talking about like a week or like two weeks. This is like three months into our partnership. We're still doing app of the day. Okay. okay. So this is a fun okay, game okay, now. Okay, okay. Do you want to guess Sue? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I love this game. This is so fun. Okay. So add things. Okay. Sue loves loves treats. Mm-hmm. Sweet sweet donut deliveries are the best. True. Also, I. Uh, if there's any sponsors for a stationary box. So if if I am the queen of apps, Sue is the queen of stationary yes. supplies. It's not a surprise why we are who we are. <laughs> okay, so Sue gets this like stationary box every month. Mm-hmm. And then there's a collection and assortment of different stickers, stickies pens and pencils Mm -hmm. and I get a tour (laughs) and it fills my heart with so much joy as well as like Sue is like the master of creating beautiful playlists like music Mm. is the thing that like just like oh oh. (laughs) your heart is full of music and so is your soul and and uh, musical theater well I mean like you inspire me and oh my goodness and so many things also like Sue just like fills up with people and also burritoing I do burrito a yeah lot. yeah getting like all cozy in a blanket yeah oh. you about nailed it yeah that's like wow that's a year in so I mean we'll see we'll see where we're at next year and you know. <laughs> we'll just do the whole interview for each other yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> So, is there anything exciting or new that's popping up that you're, like, really excited to explore or that's bringing you joy right now? Yeah, I think, like, for me, like, working on projects with new folks is always, like, exciting. Mm-hmm. And and collectively creating something together is something that always, like, inspires me as an artist, like, outside of Azimuth, but also alongside. I think, like, there's a project that I've been working on with some of my pals with Cloudsway Dance Theater with Kenji. And... We're a group of a whole whole group of Japanese Canadians like working on a piece that's about like mythology and and getting to explore like our own personal identities and like how that kind of fits into like our viewpoints and and fits into this myth as well. So that's something that's like really exciting mm-hmm. right now is just like being able to to create alongside some fantastic folks, but like, all coming in with different practices and seeing how they collide, which is super fun. So not everybody's uh, an actor. There's dancers and and dramaturg, visual artists, amazing people. Like mm. it's just like such a wonderful like mix of folks who have different practices and seeing how they like collide is just like magic. Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me like on my own I've been doing a lot of writing and like trying to like see what my next thing looks like but I'm working on a movie right now with with Imogen Legends the debutantes nice uh, <laughs> they are the funniest coolest group of humans and we're working on like it's like a Christmas movie but it's kind of scary it's called Spirit of the Season oh all right. Okay, I see what you did there. Yeah, I see. You didn't see that. Yeah. And so yeah, so we're filming that right now, and we should be out for next Christmas. Not this Christmas, but next Christmas. So I'm working on that right now, and I'm really excited about it. It's a really mm. fun, silly time. <laughs> nice. Uh, we love fun, silly times. You know. Um, 
is there a project that you've worked on in your life that you keep going back to because it, it, it's it's really taught you a lot or like you go back to the lessons that you picked up then and you bring them into your new projects? Totally. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, all the time. My writing partner, Matt Graham, he and I wrote a musical not long ago called Marnie Day. And, you know, we worked really hard on this show and it was just the most like serendipitous moment because we had just wrapped our like last thing that we worked on. Then like two months out, we said, okay, when we come back together, bring an idea. And when we got back together, we had the same idea, having never spoken about it or like, like, I don't know if we talked about it in our dreams. I don't know what happened, Hmm. but we had the exact same idea. So we were like, okay, we have to roll with this because this is the universe talking. Like, yeah. <laughs> we are but vessels at this point. So then we started working on this show and then we were going to put it up and we put it up. But then, you know, direction wise, it took a totally different turn than what we thought it was going to be. And that's when I realized I was like, this story could take a million different iterations. Like it could be so many different things. And I just want to know what they all are. So mm-hmm. I come back to it all the time because it like it was a practice in patience just in terms of like taking work that I was precious with and then just like ripping it to pieces and putting it back together in an even better way and having it be a whole different show by the time I was done with it. Mm. You know, it, it felt so different and so new and I was like, there's so much opportunity sitting here. I just got to figure it out. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a puzzle. Hmm. So I always come back to that one. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, and there's something so great about the moment you kind of let go of your preciousness in mm-hmm. art and you and you start working for the project. Mm-hmm. Totally. And I had always like been the kind of person who like preached, you know, like, don't be precious with your work. Always go back to editing it. Edit, edit, edit. But then that was the project where it was the hardest for me. Like I had never had it be that difficult, but it was so worth it. It was so worth it just in terms of how it informed my practice and how it continues to inform my practice. So, yeah, that's the one that I go back to. Thank you. What about you, Morgan? So there's this monologue from Henry the Sixth, Part One. (laughs) (laughs) Yep, Henry the Sixth, Part One. I'm going to sound like I know what I'm talking about. Anyway... So (laughs) uh, there's this Joan of Arc monologue. It's a Shakespeare monologue. And I remember my pal who I was trying to get into, we we had like, we were working on our audition pieces for the U of A together. And they slid me this monologue. And I was like, ooh, this is juicy. This is lovely. And I worked on it and I worked on it and I worked on it. And like that piece was so integral to like how I approach things because it was inherently... A contradiction. So it's the first, let me tell you whom you have condemned. And it's it's a wonderful piece, but uh, inherently a contradiction. And I think it's like, that made me like investigate the play more. And also it's my like nerdy self. I was like, oh, I don't like this play, but I really like this monologue. <laughs> <laughs> so I've kind of for the past, like, I think it's probably like 10 years had this idea of of how to how to shift the play to work for Joan's character in in the scheme of the Shakespeare. So it's a piece that I keep like picking away at, picking away at, picking away at. And the lovely folks at Thower here have like been helping me along that journey in the past few years. And it's been a piece that I just always am excited by, mm-hmm. I guess, because it's a contradiction <laughs> mm. of like I love doing like super edgy work and super like new work and and I feel like for me like that's what's exciting is because I don't do the classics very often right so it's like how can I make it work for today Mm -hmm. and like just tear it apart like (laughs) you said tear it apart and kind of put it back together again Mm -hmm. slightly in iambic (laughs) <laughs> and so do you still use it for auditions? I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something's not broken. <laughs> Don't fix it. Exactly. <laughs> We're all the same. Oh, yeah. We got like the two or three that it's like, no matter what, 
pick it up and go. Boom. Mm-hmm. What can <laughs> I do in my sleep? Yeah. But also with a lot of commitment and a lot of effort. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sleeping through it, but not in it. No, but there's so many hours that are in that. There's so many hours. It's just like, mm-hmm. yeah. put the hours in. Totally. So I, mean, <laughs> so, I mean, now we've gone back and we've looked at some past projects. Do you have a project in your future that you would dream about finishing or you dream about doing in the future? No pressure, but do you have an opus? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is your thesis as an artist, please? Oh, <laughs> My thesis as an artist is don't tell me what to do. <laughs> That's my, th- I'm not even joking. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's the artistic statement. There is a couple things that I have like on my heart that I want to get done. The mm-hmm. first of which we are doing Azimuth that I'm <laughs> very excited about is a project called Welcome to the Otherhood. And it's this experimental, you know, fo- it's a formula of a show that, you know, I've wanted to do for so, so long. And I kind of pitched it to Morgan and we jammed on it for a while and, sounded like the thing to do so I think we're gonna do it (laughs) so it's essentially it's a you know it's a it's a project where artists who have you know many other hoods in their own lives you know be it cultural or sexual or in any you know in any sense of the word it's it's a place for artists to kind of bring work that they have kind of in the hopper that they're trying to refine and then we build a a little chunk of the world based on their story and then there's multiple artists. And then the audience is endowed as, you know, potential renters in the otherhood. But as they go through, it's an, immers- an immersive experience. As they go through, they have to kind of decide if they've been othered enough to be there. If they've mm. been othered enough to be able to rent there. So that's a, a big part of, of the opus, you know, in, yeah. in my brain right now. I think it could be really cool because no matter where you take it or where you do it, it's always going to be different and it's always going to be inspired by the community that's right there. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's really exciting. And yeah. then <laughs> I have I have another project kind of like this one I have no hopes of doing yet. But, <laughs> but one day <laughs> I'm hoping yeah. it happens. I wanted to... I just wanted to do a piece that celebrates West Indian culture in in Eastern Canada because you don't see the impact that West Indian culture has on a place until you've gone somewhere like Toronto where like, you know, I grew up there and like half of the, my school was full of Guyanese kids like me. Hmm. And then I moved here and I didn't meet another Guyanese person for five years. So like the impact that that's had on my identity and like my relationship with my culture has been so profound in who I am and who I'm trying to be. Mm -hmm. And I think an exploration of that is something that I've been really keen to try and find a way to do. So Mm -hmm. those are my two. Yeah. Beautiful. I totally, yeah, I can, I can, I can definitely connect to the idea of like what it's like to have community and then not have it. And you know what? The universe is listening, so it's going to happen eventually. Let's hope. Yeah. (laughs) What about you, Morgan? I think, like, for me, things, like, shift and change a lot. Like, I feel like I'm a magpie of of skills and also a magpie of interests. Mm -hmm. So I think something that, like, has kind of rung true for me for for a while now is, like, I just try to do something that scares me every year. So I think that's, that's kind of the dream is to keep doing that is to keep learning and to keep, like, doing something that scares me because inherently it'll be, like, my focus for that year. But that's that's huh. what I got. I love it. Coming from the person who's like, let's push, let's be scary, let's be good. It's like, yeah, let's let's scare you a little bit. <laughs> hey, this, you know, I scare easy, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Sue, I guess next year we can put up Bye Bye Birdie starring Morgan and Yvonne. <laughs> well, heck. <laughs> We gotta start writing some grants. <laughs> okay. Well, what's yours? What's yours? No, seriously. What is yeah. yours? What is mine? Honestly, for a long time, it was this. To be honest, it was something where I could do a project where I could not only uh, work on some skills that I wanna, I wanna like harness, but also be able to connect to other artists and, like, both of you have kind of like shared, be inspired by other artists. You know, I think that is like a beautiful uh, gift I have right now. And uh, to to take us home, I think uh, a very important question. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a treat that brings you complete joy? 
something that you can eat that like no matter what kind of day you're having you pop it in your mouth and it brings joy that's a fantastic question (laughs) i love joy questions so much Mm. i've got two Mm. yeah go for it okay so one these are both not sweet, which is hilarious. But one is my mom's tuna bake. She makes this like tuna casserole, and it is so good. Ooh, dang. It's just so much cheese oh. and cornflakes, and just is like so wholesome, and it fills your heart. That's that's mm. that's that's up there. And then also, I really love miso soup. Miso will like just, oh, it just like. Fills my cup, and it just reminds me of my dad. Like one day when I was like really young, uh, I stayed home sick from school, and then he surprised me by coming home and just made like, like miso with udon in it, mm-hmm. and it's just like a formative like comfort food memory. That's so, so sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> tuna bake and miso, <laughs> just heart food. I love that they're connected to home. That's beautiful. <sighs> Thanks, Morgan. Oh. What about you, Sue? Oh my gosh. I was like thinking like commercially like stuff that I love. But then you brought up the home connection and I was like, oh, that's like a whole other category of stuff I love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think, ooh, okay. So I really love a deep and delicious. Okay. Like if I'm having like the worst day and I just like need to like sequester myself in a room and just be sad about it for a day I'm gonna have it deep and delicious yeah you are and I'm gonna enjoy it and then I'm gonna feel so much better <laughs> I, I I reserve one day out of a calendar year to like have a deep and delicious day but then like home food my mom makes <laughs> my mom makes a lot of really amazing food like she's like the best cook ever and mm-hmm. like something that I love is like a this is like a fun little intersection that I never really figured out so where we're from we have a little like steam bun with like filling in it and we call it that pow like p-o-w okay <laughs> yeah <Pow. laughs> but then I saw the like little Disney short called bow and I was like it's the same thing what the heck? It's the same thing. That's what she makes. So I was like, oh my gosh, like that's just a language barrier thing because my great grandmother was Chinese, but that's like all we know about oh. that like intersection in our family. We have no idea of any other like traces back to that, but we do know hmm. that like that was maybe a uh, a loss in translation. Yeah, almost. that's so, beautiful. Yeah, and it's delicious, and it's just something that makes me think of my family. Mm-hmm. So. Oh. Yeah. Thank you both so much for joining me today. What's this has what's been... Yours? What's yours? Oh, what's um... yours? You can't just ask joy in people. <laughs> you need fair. to share in joy. <laughs> um, let's see if it shocks anybody. Definitely empanadas. Empanadas. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> There's just something about them. And I think, again, it does harken back to family. It harkens back to, like, they were my favorite things to grab. Like, you can buy them anywhere on the street back home. Mm. So it was, like, just something that was so readily available that when I lost it, I really was like, oh, oh. And then my mom, like, figured out how to make them just so that, like, because she knew I was missing them. And they were, like, the first uh, Colombian food I learned how to make on my own. So there's a lot of, like, really deep roots to, like, this little empanada, but it brings me so much joy, and I love, more than anything, I love cooking it for other people. Thank you. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. So we so we look forward to empanadas at the Listen, we, house? like, when and where. <laughs> well, I guess you said my place, yeah. but yeah. Is that your place? <laughs> easy. Friends, I, again, I'm just going to say I really am so thankful to you too for everything you've done, for being here, for sitting down and sharing your thoughts. They're beautiful. And, and I'm really, really thankful to have you in my life. So thanks for joining me in this podcast today. And everyone out there, stay tuned for more. Thank you so much. Also, they're such cool people next. <laughs> I know. Right? You have no idea what so you're fancy. in for. It's a, cool. it's a good season. <laughs> it's a good season. Indeed it is. Mm, mm, mm. Awesome. Thanks, pals. Thank Thanks. you.
The In Process Podcast is brought to you by the Canada Council for the Arts and Azimuth Theatres Traversing the Azimuth Multimedia Branch. It is our aim to continue to introduce and deepen the relationships between our community and the artists within it. To keep this podcast going, go to azimuththeatre.com slash donate to help with the continuation of this podcast.